Welcome. We're back in session with your host Jay of What's Going On, a social studies network podcast. Now let's get into it. Jay for our third episode for what's going on a social studies network podcast I got it right y'all I got it right I'm pretty sure I did and today we are with Alexis hi everyone so um, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself yeah um so I am majoring in history my name secondary education um and also Spanish and political science but <laughs> I just added on those like I just really like political science <laughs> um and Spanish too but um yeah so I want to be a high school history teacher um and I'm gonna be student teaching next semester um, right full time I'm gonna be teaching human geo and um U.S. history so I'm excited I just like I got into the second minor um this upcoming year so I'm like starting the classes and I do my student teaching like like the being in the field like next yeah. year okay so like okay. yeah because I'm like you're, you're a senior yeah okay I'm a junior so okay so you're starting like the student observation yeah we next. I'm start yes yes this this next semester like I like signed up for like two of my classes and stuff like that yeah so it's nice talking to people who are like actually going into it it's making me so much more excited about yeah. me doing it but I think the first thing that I want to start off with today is what do you think social studies is now versus what you thought about it when you were younger and that could be middle school elementary school even high school you know whichever one that you can remember more vividly about how you thought about it yeah okay so I really started to like love history in middle school Mm -hmm. um I read the Percy Jackson books okay (laughs) and so um I was like obsessed with like Greek mythology um but for me it was very much like besides that um it was very much like facts. That's what was what was in the classroom. Like we just did mm-hmm. lots of facts. It wasn't a lot of discussion. Um, and then I don't remember a ton from middle school, but in high school, that's when I first started to really like love um, social studies. Um, so it was my my AP was history teacher sophomore year, um, and sh- the way I can describe it is like she was she lovingly kind of shamed us into being better people okay <laughs> it's like what do you mean by that <laughs> but um she was very much like why aren't you guys out and protesting like why aren't you guys like doing stuff and like she was like <laughs> she's like why are you guys volunteering and she'd always be like like school is not about grades right and mm. so like that was that was also something that was like really important for us to learn because I went to Northside College Prep it was okay. like a selective enrollment school and so like everyone was kind of obsessed with like doing well in school Mm -hmm. to go to college and things um but she was like school is not about grades it's basically about being better people being good citizens Mm. um and that was the first time that like that was really said to me um and because of her um I actually ended up like volunteering at the field museum um I ended up becoming an election judge oh wow (laughs) it was all the same year um and going to like my first march um but that was also because of my mom my mom was like um she's a really big advocate for things and mm-hmm. she'll like in her school like when she wants things done like she'll start committees she'll like get, yeah she gets people involved she's putting in work I love that yeah <laughs> yeah um but also that year I remember asking asking her like we were learning about the civil rights movement mm-hmm. and I remember asking her like what were Latinos doing during the civil rights movement mm-hmm. um and she didn't have an answer for me and so I very much, like, 
that kind of stuck with me all the way until college. <laughs> um, and because I never really got that question answered, like I wanted to know where Latinos out there with African Americans, right, marching. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't until like sophomore year of college that I got to like explore that answer. And the answer is yes, of course. Um, there were like lots of multiracial alliances and like like ones I can remember off the top of my head is like the Rainbow Coalition in Chicago, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Um, like that's that's where I'm from. And um, there was like the San in San Francisco, uh, the San Francisco State College. There was like a largest student protest, and it was like their the students' protest resulted in the first um, College of, of Ethnic Studies, mm -hmm. um, and it was like a coalition between the Black Panther Party, um, Latino students, mm -hmm. and Asian Americans. Super cool. Um, but like, not learning that history really really affected me. I feel like because mm -hmm. like. It was really important to finally learn or learn about that here, um, but like those are some of the reasons kind of that I want to be a uh, high school history teacher mm -hmm. is because I don't want that to happen to other like kids where they just never learn about their history, yeah. their K through twelve schooling, um, and that they don't feel represented. Um, it's very much like I want to make sure that my students see themselves reflected in the classroom, their history, the history of the, of their communities. Um, I think it's really important to like student belonging and affirming mm -hmm. their identity, right? Um, showing them that their their history, that their student communities, is also U.S. history. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly. Most definitely. I um, what you mentioned about your teacher telling you that school is not just about grades. I didn't learn that until I got here, really. Because, you know, I've had teachers in high school, like, reiterate, like, you're more than just students, you're people, you're people outside of school, but I went to a noble school, and so it was very much college-based, like, yeah. you know, everybody was obsessed with, like, being smart, being in honors classes, being in AP classes, and so getting grades was, like, such a big part of education for me, like, just getting, like, those high grades, like, being seen as, like, that really smart student sure there's a lot of pressure right? yeah especially because you know you like need it for college right those grades also equal right like scholarships That's yes like a second layer of, of stress of <laughs> stress and pressure like oh my god I need this but I think like what's important about the grades aspect is when you talked about you used to think that history was facts and it's like if you're just learning facts through history and you're just learning history and social studies just for a grade then what does that mean for the way that you're learning social studies or history? You're not learning it. You're learning, oh, 1492, Christopher Columbus. And it's like, why is that the first thing that we always think of, like the first thing that we always remember? Or the 1960s was the civil rights movement. And, you know, it's a lot of important things that we need to learn about, but it's like the way that we learn about them because the way that is like structured in our classrooms. And I think that, that that's extremely important that you brought that up because a lot of the times to talk about we don't we don't look at like these smaller things that build up and add to the whole picture for sure for sure history is very much like a, in the classrooms and like make it was it was taught as like a thing of the past mm -hmm. history is happening now, mm. right history is happening now and She's like dropping gems y'all <laughs> um and so the way that right she encouraged us to like go out and like make be part of the change we wanted to see mm -hmm. and all of the time that's not how really history is taught and so it doesn't, a lot of, I hear people describe his, history as like, um, and like social studies is like, it teaches people to be better citizens. Mm -hmm. But I feel like not just to be better citizens in terms of like, like voting or like being an election or things like that. It's like about challenging, right? Like the status quo mm -hmm. and like working to better your your community, right? And like doing things that'll help, mm -hmm. help kind of like, yeah, there are things to help do to mean that it's not history is like not in the past, right? It's happening now, and you need to be part of that. You know, be part of that change, you know. <laughs> yes, I seen this picture on social media, and it was a Dr. King, Malcolm X, and different civil rights leaders and different people from that era, and it was a picture in color, and I'm like, it totally tripped me out. And I seen this picture maybe about like a few years ago but I'm like what the heck is this like it was so like <laughs> weird to see it I was just like they were in color and they were like basically the whole the whole point of the post was like they like to put pictures in black and white to make us think we're so far removed from that time 
but these pictures are in color. And I'm like, when you think about it, I'm pretty sure there were colored TVs during that time too. But then also when we think about it, you know, to your point about history being not just in the past, but history being right now, our grand- a lot of our grandparents are still alive. And they were there during that time. Some of them were probably there at those protests, which I think is like super, it's crazy because it's crazy that it tripped me out so much. There's a picture of Dr. King in color. I never thought that there were any pictures of Dr. King, Malcolm X, Rosa Parks, you know, Claudette COVID. I never thought like all of these different people, they had pictures in color. I didn't, I didn't really, it didn't, it didn't register my mind. It seems so far from us. You yes. Know? When like, I don't know, like, yeah, that's why like, I also think like, like in the, like we should be encouraging our students to go and talk to their families and the mm-hmm. communities to like learn about this history that's very much to like impacting us now. Like imagine if like, I don't know, I never, I don't, my teachers never encouraged me to do that, but mm-hmm. I would have loved to do that because like, I feel like social studies also is also about learning more about yourself yes. and your community. And like, uh, yeah, it's really crazy about those uh, that we've never seen like pictures in color. I don't know. <laughs> Even though when we look at JFK and Ronald Reagan and all them other people, they most definitely got some videos of them in color and some pictures of them in color. And I'm like, so what does that say for white history versus non-white history? It just really shows like the propaganda and the subliminals that they're trying to push toward young people as they're growing up in the education system but another point that I wanted to you know touch back on that you've brought up quite a bit is identity and I remember in my classes later on in my education a lot of people will be asking how many of you had black teachers how many of you had teachers that looked like you if you did have them what was the first grade where you had officially a teacher that looked like you and for me, I was I was a bit fortunate because I've had educators and instructors in my classrooms from a young age. And I'm not just talking about assistants. I'm talking about people who actually were teaching math, teaching English, teaching science and things like that. But a lot of my peers, they were like, dang, I don't know, like eighth grade, high school, if that this is the first, like you a black professor, I ain't never seen that before. I didn't even think, honestly, when I had my first black professor, I'm like, we here. I was like, oh, I had no idea and so especially like just coming to like this campus and it's a PWI and all that stuff and so it's like you know so it's like with with what you mentioned about not having those answers readily there for you and it's like sometimes it's not even just about the people looking like you having those answers it's about the people who also don't look like you they should have those answers you know we put so much pressure on our teachers of color because it's like, they're supposed to be our saviors. They're supposed to come in and be the change. And it's like, well, that leads other white teachers to be lazy because it's like, you should be, if you know that you're gonna be the majority of the people in these classrooms teaching students that look different than you, have different backgrounds than you, you should have these answers too. And I thought that was really important because you know, it's like the same questions that you had about what were Latinos doing during the civil rights movement. I have those questions about, you know, if I see something happening like, you know, with, with recently, you know, with um with the Latino community and being deported and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, where my black people at? I know we out there supporting them. What we doing? Where we at? And it's like, it's nice to be able to see, you know, yourself in so many different spectrums and so many different aspects doing things. But it's hard to to understand the gravity of that if, if no one can tell you like, oh, this is what we're doing. And so I just think that that is super important. But even so, with the pressure of teachers of color, it's, it's super important to have them because if we don't have them, we don't have that representation. And that was part of the reason why I want to be a teacher too, because seeing them, being able to teach and be smart and look nice every day <laughs> and just doing all these excellent things, I'm like, this is dope. Like, I, I love being able to see this because so often, all basically all teachers are white. Yeah. white women no yeah. it's, it's white women <laughs> as some great teachers but you know it's a special connection that you can't get from someone who doesn't look like you and you That's know true. I just love that you brought that up yeah no same I don't think I had I think the first teacher of color I ever had was Miss Lana's fifth grade I don't remember like any other teachers from, from middle school except Miss Lana's fifth grade um she was Mexican Mexican American just like me um yeah she was the first teacher of, of color I had and then all the way until high school um my U.S. history teacher was Asian American mm-hmm. um so yeah I think but no I don't think I had besides those two it was mostly yeah white women <laughs> yeah for sure but 
I would I want to go back to the point that you talked about like kind of like that we put a lot of pressure on teachers to have all of the answers mm -hmm. um but I think really that should be like like a misconception misconception that we have it should really be like like students need to know that teachers don't have all the answers mm -hmm. right that like mm -hmm. it needs to be like we are working together to learn um and be better people together right like mm -hmm. we shouldn't have to like give the students all the answers and also it's like it's really hard to be inclusive of everyone mm -hmm. and so like I really believe that like it's important to have the, like the history of marginalized groups be taught in the classroom and like looking at sources at primary sources and reading about that and reading about these like histories but it's also important that we like ask encourage our students to like question what they're learning even mm -hmm. as like, they're learning it like why are we learning this right like what aren't we learning what like voices are not being taught in the classroom right and so like encourage them to to go out and do their own research and not like teaching themselves right not like that but like just encouraging them to keep to always like ask questions and be critical of what they're learning um not Girl, being, yeah like you're teaching me so much. <laughs> okay that's right that's right <laughs> right because like we're not we're not just supposed to like throw things on students, right? Mm -hmm. We have to encourage them to like come to their own conclusions, look at these sources and like, right? Like, I don't know. Uh, every time I hear like things on the news and like, I'm like, that's not right. Like, I feel like no one taught them how to do an evidence-based argument. <laughs> like, where's your evidence? Where are your partner sources? <laughs> like, I'm going to teach my kids to make sure they know how to analyze a primary source and they know how to make those arguments and apply that to like their real life, you know? <laughs> I think like, what I gather from that is something that I'm working on is grace, you know, giving grace to people who are in positions of power that affect your life mm -hmm. as you move forward, especially in the education system, because, <clears throat> oh, sorry. <clears throat> I know that in my mind, like to me, teachers are supposed to be, I don't know. I don't want to say like these all knowing beings because they aren't. And I feel like I was one of those people that, you know, was very unforgiving of teachers that hurt me by not mm -hmm. teaching me things or teachers that hurt me by saying things that maybe they shouldn't have said that maybe was a stereotype that maybe they didn't even understand that they what they were saying was hurtful and I think learning together such an important thing I feel like that's a part of history too because if social studies is supposed to bridge the gap between the past the present and to create a better future so that way we don't keep making the same mistakes the only way to do that is if we learn together but I think also what's so important about that is it stops students of color from having to be the teachers, especially in spaces where like not many, not many kids in their class look like them or they're the only ones. Because I feel like a lot of, a lot of the times, if it's not a, a teacher of color being pressured, it's a student of color being pressured to know everything. Oh, you're the only Hispanic in the classroom. You're the only Asian in the classroom. It's Latina Heritage Month. It's Black History Month. Let's bring them up and let's have them teach about culture. And it's like, I can't speak for everybody. I know. It's, ex it's we're not exhausting. Alone it. Yeah. And we're being, we were raised in the same, like, culture as everyone else in which, mm -hmm. like, whiteness is centered, right? We have a lot of unlearning to do ourselves. Yes. Right? Yes. Like, we are not. <laughs> just Definitely. Because, just because you understand, like, the injustices that maybe one community goes through does not mean that you are an expert in any way anyone else's right like that's not I don't know it's it's hard it's you're right you're totally right though it's it's very hard but I just that learning together but I feel like part of the problem is like the way that our education system is set up it's a teacher student dynamic relationship it's not a you learn from me I learn from you you're the teacher I'm the teacher and I feel like a lot of the times we get discouraged especially when we don't have people who are teaching us that that look like us because they get to dictate what we're learning throughout the year they get to you know and then especially with the mandates in the curriculum anyway that the way it's being taught legally and the fact that like it's a lot of things that we can't change such as names of holidays and things like that like that makes it hard as well for us to put into our teachers what they should be putting into us and them putting into us what we should be putting into our teachers because that environment is not set up for everything to flow like that and if it's not set up for everything to be to flow like that it's not gonna flow every yeah. it's gonna be the same cycle constantly over and over and over again and I think like us making history right now as you mentioned it should start with that we need to work together and I think just like going back to that point about grace is that we understand what the what the, what the teachers look like we know what the demographic looks like we know what majority of them look like 
white women. And I think extending that grace to them, allowing them to learn so that way we can learn with them and they can put the goodness into us and and mend those different traumas that maybe we've experienced. I feel like that's a that's a great place to start. And I don't I don't think that we talk about that a lot is collaborating with each other and working together as a team. I think it's just so easy to be like, oh, you uneducated white woman, you hurt me throughout all these years. And it's like instead of saying, well, it's a little bit deeper than that. What Mm -hmm. can you do now, right? Like how can they work to learn Mm -hmm. more about like the students they're teaching, right? And like working working to like foster environments where like what they like what questions you're asking is like what can they do to help their students of color feel mm-hmm. comfortable and safe in the classroom and feel like they can share their experiences, but also again like not putting it on them. Mm-hmm. That's super exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah like how can we like also have other I don't know it's it's hard. But like no definitely like giving giving each other grace is really important. Um and just not right like it matters what you did in the past, but it's, it also matters like what you're doing now um, to like to do better. Because I think also like within the education system, like with the past, something that we never focus on is like when Brown versus the Board of Education happened and all of that stuff. And people were like talking about the schools integrating and, and segre- segregation ending. A lot of black teachers lost their jobs. Uh, and it's like all of these students and hold on, pause before I continue. The <laughs> thing that irritates me the most about that is the white, black students, students of color were not trying to be with white people. They were not trying to be like white people. They wanted the resources. They wanted what they had. They didn't want to be in raggedy classrooms. They didn't want to yeah. be freaking tired all the time because they're not learning what they need to be learning. And then when it's time for them to go out into the world, they're not at the same playing field because they didn't have the same opportunities that were afforded to their white counterparts. Yeah. Now, going back to that, with the, with the teachers losing their job. Wait, you, do you mind me adding before? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. No, like, I I was just thinking about that as well, about mm-hmm. how, like we, we, like, we talk about all the problems in schools now and how, like, right, we're, like, we're not giving our students cover what they need to, like, mm-hmm. thrive, right? But, like, Students of color were receiving that from their own teachers yes. who were teaching them, right? Who like look like them, right? Like they knew that school was about, right? Like affirming their identities and learning about their communities and and um, working towards social justice. They knew that before, and then like it's it was the it's only after like integration, I guess, right? Did that that's not like that that stopped school from being that type of place mm-hmm. in which like they're right they, they, they were it, it stopped being a place of like love I guess yeah right? like, they, they stopped that warmth and that community like all of that was gone because they're in this cold environment where people don't even want them there and they probably don't want to be there either and I'm just like y'all just sit in here and be like okay y'all said you want to be with white people well here y'all go and it's like we, we never said that and we never said that and so now not only are black teachers out of jobs black students are out of love students of color out of love students teachers of color are, are, are out of jobs it's like and then it's like what does that mean for the way that communities are, are now being set up because you know when we talk about like the classroom when we talk about learning when we talk about social studies it's not just what's going on in the classroom it's about what's going on outside of the classroom too that builds that history that we're learning inside the classroom and it's like if we can't make money to plant our own communities then what are our communities going to start looking like what are the environments that our students are going to start you know internalizing for themselves as they're going into these classrooms and it's like as you said we're building history so if my history is is in shambles because of the way that the education system has has just completely tore apart our unity then how do we think that the history of students of color people of color are going to look in the future when we're learning about all of these these crazy things like violence and and being criminals and all of this stuff and it's like well that's not fair because we didn't get the chance to properly build up our own history because we have people controlling our history for us and then blaming us for it we didn't even have y'all to do all that that's why it's so important to like teach about not only oppression and struggle right but Mm -hmm. about resistance right how Mm. how are communities of color like resisting right like we're not i don't know like you have to you have to make sure that you're you're like elevating voices of people 
and showing that like showing them that their communities were co-creators of change right mm -hmm. they were agents of change they were not like passive recipients of this right so like for example like talking about how um as a like a the one of the reasons that like people wanted integration was for the resources mm -hmm. right and so like talking about like the first thing that comes to mind is like the the students in LA in 1968 like the mm -hmm. LA blow ups and they talk about like they recognized that they were Mexican-American students and Latinos recognized they weren't getting the resources they needed like mm -hmm. their white counterparts and right they it was like the it was like the biggest student protest or one of the biggest student protests during that time and I watched like um, a documentary mm -hmm. um, and like read like sources from it and they were those kids were so smart they were like these are the things we need like we need teachers As that they actually typically are right I guess smart. for sure <laughs> always no like like they they like talked about like we need teachers who believe in us mm -hmm. right who are not steering us towards um who are steering us away from like college and like higher education we need teachers um who who are supporting us right and love us and that's not what they had it's so, like yeah I don't know I sorry I, I got lost <laughs> we're out with our original question <laughs> There was an original question. Girl, know. we've been talking back and forth about so much stuff. I didn't even realize there was an original question. But no, I just think like that that resistance part, like we didn't just lay down and take it. I think that's something that like is used as a tactic to make people feel inferior, to make non-white people feel inferior and stay in a position of subordination. Be but it's like they didn't just lie down and take it. They fought. Yeah. You know, and I think that that's something that's extremely important that also needs to be put in the history books that also needs to be taught within social studies, because if you're constantly teaching a community like, oh, you guys can't speak English, you guys came across the border, or you guys are taking people's jobs and you guys are just slaves and and you guys were just immigrants who came from Ellis Island and all that stuff. It's like, what does that mean for us when we're looking at that? And we're like, dang, we want nothing like that's crazy. And it's like, that's not the whole thing like we actually we actually fought but it's like they can't put that that strength through social studies through education to the students because then we're going to want to rise up and do those things such as protest and show like yeah, yeah we smart we real smart but that's what the point of social should be right like mm -hmm. not only teaching about like examples of resistance but also like also exploring strategies and tools that students can use now yes right to make a difference now right um I just think that that's also really important right like it's not not just and all not just like resistance it's like three things it's like I kind of think about like three things it's like teaching like a more inclusive history right mm -hmm. where we affirm students identity mm -hmm. right where we teach the, the history of students of color of marginalized groups like people from LGBT plus community people who with disabilities like they all have so much history that we just is never taught but also teaching about resistance right how did my how did my community work um to to gain like better better rights right how did they mm -hmm. work towards um um getting the resources they needed in education right um and also teaching that last part like strategies for resistance now and i know like with affirming identities i would love to hear like more about like your personal experience because i know you touched on it but you know i just think it's very important to to hear it from other people about how your identity was affirmed how did it make you feel like how did that research make you feel how did you go through all of that kind of stuff yeah um so I would say I went to a school in which like it was it was actually pretty diverse it was okay. like when we say a diverse I feel like sometimes it's it, it really was like there was there was lots of like, like diversity there's a few black people here a few Asian American people here a few Latino people here and then the rest is like white people but yeah no I feel like this one was really it was really I think like 30 percent latino like 30 oh wow white. like yeah it was like okay y'all yeah. was diverse <laughs> yeah. diverse okay 25 percent african-american like it was yeah we had, a, we had a lot it was it was pretty cool um and so like i feel like i didn't feel the need to like say i am mexican-american mm, my culture mm -hmm. and this is my history i feel like i didn't really need that until i got to college mm. where it actually felt more like where where are my Latinos? <laughs> where are my people? <laughs> like who's who's Spanish? Like feel like home, like someone. Um, I actually got that in like one of my education classes. And mm -hmm. It was me and this girl, and we were the only two like Latinas in the entire class. And then my TA was Latina. She was like, "You guys should be friends." <laughs> Okay. Yes, having those instructors that look like you, like I found my people. 
<laughs> no, it was oh, it was so nice. Like I, yeah, I don't know if her name was the uh, RTA was her name was Marisol. Mm-hmm. Marisol is is amazing. Like she's just I don't know. She's very supportive of us, and um, again, she like showed us right like. Mm-hmm. And she was she was she was going places. She was she had all these like internships and jobs and like an edu an education and like I don't know. She was very much like a inspiration. Like when we when I got here and um yeah and so like I think it was sophomore year mm-hmm. when I first got to like explore. It was for like a, a history project, so we mm-hmm. have to write like a a really long like history paper by like we take this. I forgot blanking all the classes but I think it was like history 300 and then history 498 Mm -hmm. um but anyway so I had um I had this professor and she um yeah this was the first opportunity that I got to like do research and I knew I wanted to be related to the Chicano movement Mm -hmm. but I also wanted to go back to that question like right the point was like I wanted to know like were we helping each other were people Mm -hmm. helping each other um and so that's when I first got to like learn about it and then I also took um uh, Latino Latino studies like mm-hmm. 100 um and that's also where I first like got to learn about that history mm-hmm. um but no it was it was just very much like like empowering like every time I was in class I just wanted to cry I was like how did I not like know all of this and then also I don't know and then I for that other history class I had read um the one where I got to like follow the project mm-hmm. and like do my own research that was um I read a book by Lorna Risa. I think her name was, um, and it was like, oh, what was it called? Am I going to be able to remember right now? To March for Others. Mm-hmm. That's what it was called. Um, and I was just, so, I just, it was, I just, it was, it was fascinating. Um, and like, I remember finding like a newspaper article um, in which it talked about how the Black Panthers were marching with the united farm workers oh that's dope yes right and i remember like i remember calling my friend and i was like girl i just <laughs> found this this how's it called this newspaper and we should talk about how the ufw how the, how the black panthers are supporting the ufw and i was like i cannot believe like i was i was just so, so surprised and they talked about like in the article um it was they said something like we have to recognize that like um we like what did they say exactly it was something like like we have to recognize that this is like a common a common struggle and that Mm -hmm. we have to help each other right like one um as long as like one group is oppressed like we're all oppressed Mm -hmm. and like in that article I was like it was the perfect first source to find oh my gosh it was just so good but yeah I don't know it was it was I don't know it was like very like like changing I don't know I'm not even exaggerating to like be able to do that um yeah I don't know I totally get that for me because research was like a very freeing thing for me like learning things in class and then going to research further outside of class and then being able to take that information that I learned back to my class because a lot of the times it's like yes in college like you get a more radicalized version of what you learned in Mm -hmm. high school maybe not even radicalized maybe just even just what you didn't get in high school you didn't get in middle school and I think for me just being able to like have that interest to research on my own was just something that was just so it validated me a lot because it just opened my eyes to like just just new things and made me understand oh made me understand myself better made me understand my people more made me love like made me love my culture more because it's so easy to just learn this traumatizing thing here learning this empowering thing here but if you don't go and extend that research and extend those things for yourself it's like I don't know it's just like you just learn you're just there learning just for the just for the moment but I think like oh man what was I gonna say I had so much that I wanted to say but just with that I like I'm really fascinated in like hearing the way that history and learning about it outside of your classroom and being so excited about it has impacted you because I feel like a lot of the times when we hear about like people being empowered when we hear about people being passionate about something it's not always through research it's not always through through history and so you mentioned like a few things such as like the Chicana movement things like that like what did that mean for you in the way that you want to be a history teacher now like the way that you researched how do you plan on taking that like to your classrooms and 
with your students, like the ones who look like you, who speak Spanish like you, and the ones who don't. Yeah, I think I think learning about that just made me realize like there was just so much history mm -hmm. I didn't know, and I still don't know. Still I don't know. Still don't know that I'm I'm always learning. I took a I took a class on um, on queer history. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, every single day I learned like I never learned any of that history, and it was just also like fashion. I was like, this is the history that we need to be teaching. Our, our our students who are part of the LGBT plus community, mm -hmm. right? Like, that's like a part of making them feel safe in the classroom and affir like like affirming them. And I don't know, it was just yeah. So like learning learning this history in college um, made me realize how much like how important it is for that to be taught in K through twelve. Mm -hmm. Um. So no, definitely, I'm gonna be like, I always go back to like when I teach like the history of the civil rights movement mm -hmm. it is not gonna it's not gonna be just like focusing on like one group or yep. one time period right like extending that and like learning about yes the Chicano movement but also um about the movement for disability rights that mm. happened during the same time mm -hmm. right um like the african-american civil rights movement was so influential in itself but it also like encouraged all of these other groups to also like fight for their rights mm -hmm. and like it was we see it like we see it in like the latina community we see it in the lgbt plus community as well um they started a little bit earlier um in like the 1950s mm -hmm. um and then changed in the 1960s and then the 1970s it was like sorry so much there but um and so just kind of like making sure i'm able to like include as much as, as much of that history i can and that like also like i hate when it's like oh we're gonna take this one month we're gonna take this one day to talk about this one specific group. It should be all the time. It should yeah. be all throughout. It's every day. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right. It should be. It should be throughout throughout the whole year and like integrate it right with with everything else. There should be like making sure that you're you're teaching, um, like if you're teaching about like the civil rights movement, making mm -hmm. sure you like bring up like different different identities like talk about intersectionality talk yes about, yeah yeah like like i i just learned that harriet tubman um had a disability right and so like not only she was she like this great advocate she like also like teaching like she also had this disability and um just like recognizing that like seeing that reflected mm -hmm. in that history for, for students who have disabilities can be so so empowering like, again like i don't know just like I get excited just like talking about it. I don't know if you could tell. I'm just like, I, I like I'm not really sure that. like you glowing, you all hyped up. No, I love hearing stuff like that. But I think for me, like I'm an English major and I want to be an English teacher. And so like, yeah. you know, my curriculum is a bit different. You know, I don't necessarily have the same history like like thing that you got going on. Like I'm not necessarily a pro at it. Like, but for no, me definitely, definitely not, bro. <laughs> you sound like I'm like you're English stuff out of but <laughs> for me with being an English teacher I find it very important because in high school we went from English classes to humanities and like I think my senior year and I think what was important about that is that yes we had English but when we were reading when we were writing it was history incorporated into it yeah. and I think like for me because I know I actually like how do you plan on incorporating these things that you're learning into your classrooms yeah. I want to make sure like even though I'm going to be teaching whatever English teachers teach about grammar and all that other stuff I want to make sure that I'm making it inclusive because history is not just so, social studies is not just history social studies in history is in math it's in science it's in art it's in English it's in every subject it's just the way that we choose to to con to constrain these different subjects and separate them and I think I just want to make sure that I'm including all of these things into my lessons because I know that I'll be teaching young adults. I know that I'll be teaching the big babies, the high schoolers, and they're <laughs> going to go on. And even if they don't go on to college, that's fine. But when they go to these spaces, I don't want them to be like, mm, Ms. Jane never told me that. I did not learn it in her classroom. Like, what happened? No, I want them to be like, this is one of my groundbreaking classes. This is one of my eye-opening yeah. classes. Like, I took from this class, and I can add it on to the rest of my classes. And what I'm learning is an extension of what she taught me. And I know like you did that safe space how you talked about like that warmth and that love and things like that. I think like that's super important on my identity is like how I want to teach and how I want to interact with my students. And I just, you know, I think that that's just something that something that we don't always think about. We think about we think about what do what do our students need? And we don't always know that. We can't always predict that. Like 
we have to learn that from them and I think yeah. like especially like with your excitement like that's dope because a lot of like a lot of people be like uh, I don't want to like I just this, this is just gonna be hard work that I have to do but it is you we know. have to recognize that it's hard work I it is in it our is. classes we don't talk about it enough like, mm-hmm. it's 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 gonna be hard like you gotta put in the extra work to like right like learning is a lifelong process learning is the most definitely <laughs> lifelong process, process. like you're... you should have looked at the camera when you said that <laughs> <laughs> learning is a lifelong process yes damn. <laughs> right like you're not you're not gonna have all the answers and like you said you're also learning from your students right Mm -hmm. but also like don't make sure that like you're doing you're doing you're gonna doing you're gonna do the best that you can Mm -hmm. don't don't feel like you even if like so i was was just teaching about um mass incarceration in Mm, my classes one of my favorite topics (laughs) so so much there it's so complicated and I talked to my supervisor about it and I was like, I just feel like I can't do it all in one day. Like mm-hmm. I can't do it all in one day. I can't do it all in two days. Like there's I because I'm because I'm a student observer. Mm-hmm. Um I don't teach for more than like a lesson or like or one day at a time and things like that. And so um how's it called? She was like, even if they walk away like learning that, like what did she say exactly? Something like mass incarceration is is a problem and that um it's disproportionately affecting like people of color mm-hmm. and like if they walk away with one way in which like they can work to fix that like you you did you, you did your job right like you change how they're gonna view that right mm-hmm. and I was like yeah and I was like you're right it's like it's you know not, you know like <laughs> they're not gonna me- remember all of those facts they're yeah gonna remember like like how can they work hopefully like how can they work to to like mitigate the effects or like work to fix it um but yeah, I don't know. Just like, it's not, it's not on you. You're, you're, you're going to be a great teacher. Like, yeah, I, I can already see it. Like you're, you're, the passion is there. So it's like, got it. <laughs> and with that, I think that we can end it there. Um, Before we end though, I like to do a little thing where I call, you know, drop a gem. What is something or some things that you found not necessarily most important? Cause we talked a great deal about a lot of important things, but what is something that you want the listeners to take with them from this episode today should it be to like other teachers or like it could be the it could be the social studies teachers it could just be you know to the listeners but something that you want them to take with with them from this yeah I would say kind of just like listen to your students yes listen to your students for sure (laughs) like listen to your students and like hear them about also like about what they want to learn about I know we have a bunch of standards Mm -hmm. like they're like that we have to like that tell us what we have to teach but like making sure you're yeah like you you're listening to them and that you're allowed you're giving them the chance to to like explore questions they have Mm -hmm. um and kind of ask critical questions and like giving them those opportunities in that space if you can as much as you can right to to do that and um yeah (laughs) <laughs> and I think for my gym, I'm gonna steal what you said from like earlier. History is happening right now. History is not just in the past, and it's a continuous thing that's gonna always keep happening. So we need to make sure that we're putting into our students the empowerment and the love and the warmth that they need to continue making better history and to continue being better people. Because, like you said, we're we're more than our grades and. We're more than what we learn in the classroom. We're more than what we're memorizing. So when we come together, we make very great history. And with that, thank you guys for joining us at this third episode of What's Going On in Social Studies podcast with your hosts, me, Jay. And again, thank you, Alexis, for joining us. And we out. Mm-hmm.